If you use apps to automatically process emails and post entries to your accounting system, stuff like Dext, Corpe, HubDoc, if you email invoices and receipts into your accounting apps, you know just what a pain it can be when the app won't process like the body of the email or it won't handle multiple attachments correctly. It's a real headache and every app does it differently. Take for example Stripe's recent switch from attaching one PDF to now attaching two PDFs. Most apps will separate this as two separate transactions. Here's David Leary discussing this in a recent cloud accounting pod. I think about six or seven apps I use, SaaS apps, they use Stripe for their monthly recurring charge for the, the app, the, the, the subscription. Stripe used to just send an email that they received the payment, and that was fine. You could forward it to auto entry or Dex, and they would read the email and stick it in my QuickBooks. Well, now Stripe sends a PDF attached, but they don't send one PDF. They send two PDFs. They send an invoice PDF and then something that looks exactly like it that they call the receipt PDF. This sort of headache can take several forms. So we're going to go through, I think, the four most common issues. Build a zap to fix each of them. And I'm even going to provide a link to the zaps themselves so you can rip them off. Wow, I know how lazy you are. Let's go build a thing. So we're going to set up four zaps. One, a zap to turn the body of an email into a PDF. Okay. Two, a zap to download an invoice that's linked inside an email, not an attachment, just a link. Three, a zap to download an invoice that's on a web page that's linked in the email. And four, a zap to merge two attachments into one. The Stripe example David was just talking about. Now we'll set each of these apps to then forward to your Dext or Auto Entry, Corpe, Zero, HubDoc, wherever you send those docs. And the beauty here is when you set up those apps, or just rip them off, you can point any number of emails to auto route through those apps. So for example, if you have six software companies that use Stripe for billing, they're all gonna have that two PDF attachment issue. You can set all six of those monthly bills to auto route to this one zap. Very nice. Okay, zap one. We're gonna turn the body of an email into a PDF. Some services do this well, like Bill.com does this well, handles the body of the email itself. But some aren't great at handling the body. The biggest example of this is actually zero. In fact, this has been a thing that people wanted for a long time. When you forward an email, it pulls the attachment but doesn't do anything with the body. And they basically said, we bought hub.go go pound sand. But you know what? We don't need you, big accounting. We'll make our own solution. Okay, so we're gonna be working in Zapier. And we're gonna use this Stripe invoice as an example. This Stripe invoice has several things going on that can potentially create issues. Let's say that we just wanted to grab the body of this email and use that as our bill. This is common with like utility companies. Some companies are just not gonna give you an invoice. They just give you the email. So let's pop over to Zapier. We're gonna make a new Zap from scratch. We're gonna start with email by Zapier. This is our trigger step. What this lets you do is forward emails to Zapier to be processed. Now, why wouldn't you just connect your Gmail or your Office 365 to do it that way? In my opinion, you're better off setting up rules in your email inbox to route for automated handling than connecting services like Zapier to look at every single one of your emails. That way I can manage all those routing rules in one place in my inbox. Third-party services aren't seeing every single one of your emails. When I wanna do something automated, I do it via a redirect, a forwarding rule, on my own inbox, in this case, over to Zapier. So our trigger event is when there's a new inbound email. Zapier lets you set up custom inboxes for you to redirect to. So we can name this one body to attachment. I'm gonna copy this email address, pop back over to Gmail and forward this one to that Zapier email address and hit send. When we pop back to Zapier, we're gonna test this step and it will catch the email that we just sent over, test trigger. Just You just keep mashing it until it comes through. Okay, we found a request. This is the email that I just sent to Zapier. Whole bunch of data in here. Plain text body of the email, all sorts of stuff. Okay, that's it. We're gonna hit continue. Now Zapier's got that email now. Next thing we wanna do is turn the body of that email into a PDF. There's a few tools that'll do this. My favorite is pdf.co, and I'm gonna choose the action HTML to PDF converter. We've now got the HTML of that email. We're gonna plug that HTML into pdf.co. It's gonna give us a PDF back. And hit continue, back to my account. Now, what is the HTML that you wanna convert? I'm gonna click up here and it'll show the variables from the previous step from that email trigger. We're gonna grab the body HTML, portrait orientation, portrait, that's fine, page size letter, all that looks fine, I think. Okay, hit continue. And then we're gonna test this step and see if the PDF actually looks how we want it to look. Okay, test was successful. Here's the URL of the PDF file it created. Let's open that up. 
absolutely beautiful. Not really, but when all they give you is the body of the email, that's good enough for me. So last step here is we're then gonna for, no, is we're then gonna forward that new PDF as an email attachment to my document management service, Dext or HubDoc or whatever I'm using. I'm just gonna use email by Zapier again. You could send this from your own email address. I don't like to do that because it like kind of clogs up my sent mail. I choose the action, send an outbound email. This is where you would put the address of your document management service. I'm just gonna forward it back to myself for testing purposes. Subject, I actually pull in the subject of the original email. So we go back to step one. I'm gonna insert subject here. You have to have a body. I usually put processed by Zapier. So I remember it's not a thing that I did myself. And then we're gonna add the file attachment. Unfurl step two here, say show all options. And we wanna grab the URL of that PDF file I just made. And that should be it. And hit continue. Let's test that and pop back over to my Gmail to see what it looks like. Wow, so good. Okay, that was zap one. Zap two is to download a file that's linked inside the email. So it's not a file attachment. The file is linked inside the email. It's really annoying because those document management services won't grab anything that's linked inside the email, just attachments. But we will fix it with science. Okay, we're gonna go back to this same Banner Bear email again. So while they do attach an invoice and a receipt, they're also linked from inside. So if you hover over these buttons, there's a link that will take you out to a page to download that PDF. Some vendors, this is all they give you. They don't actually attach to the file. They give you a link to the file. That's what we're solving for here. So pretend there's no attachments on this. We're gonna have Zapier download this file for us and then forward it as an attachment. Okay, let's make a new Zap. First step here is gonna be a little different. It's gonna be Parser by Zapier. This app is wild. Okay, trigger event, new email. So this one triggers when it receives an email just like the other one. Let's get a little more magic to it. So you select which mailbox you're mailing stuff to, and these mailboxes are set up over at parser.zapier.com. I got a few working here already. We're gonna create a new mailbox. So here's the address for the new mailbox. I might remember to kill these addresses after the video. I'm gonna pop back to my Gmail and forward this to that address. I'm gonna paste that in there and send. Come back to Parser. It's gonna look for that email that we just sent over. Just mash that refresh, mash it, mash. There we go. So here's the email that we just forwarded in. But what Parser does, it lets you pull specific little bitties out of that email. So for example, Banner Bear sends me this email every single month. Same format, sometimes dollars change, dates change, that sort of thing. With this tool, I can select bits I wanna pull out of that email every time and use them as variables in subsequent Zapier steps. So if you take a look at this, this is like the general flow of the email. Your receipt from Banner Bear, a receipt number, an image, which looks like it's broken. Got a Stripe URL in here, I'm not sure what that is. 49 bucks, paid January 27th. But here you've got download invoice and then a URL. So if you go back to that email, here's that download invoice button, this guy, that's this download invoice and this URL. So we can select this and name it. So this is the URL that if you click, we'll give you an invoice. We're gonna call this invoice URL. Save. It collapses that down into this double curly bracket thing. We can do the same with receipts if we wanted to, but I don't. I can say save address and template. Okay, our JSUY mailbox has been set up. Let's hop back to Zapier. I'm gonna choose that. Whoop, we gotta hit load more to update this. We're gonna choose that mailbox we just created and hit continue. to test it. It's gonna grab the one email we sent in there already. Maybe not. If that's a lie, we gotta email another one in there. So I'm gonna pop back over here, forward it again, send. Hit continue. Now the only other step we have to do here is just send that attachment. We're gonna go email by Zapier, send outbound email. This would go to your document management service. I'm just gonna send this to myself. Use the same subject as the original email, processed by Zapier. And in our attachment step here, we go back up to that first step where it parsed out the URL. There's a whole bunch of items here. I'm gonna type in parse. And here we go, the bottom one here. Parse output invoice URL. You can see it actually shows the Stripe URL that it grabbed from that email. I'm gonna insert that there, hit continue, and let's test that out and see what that looks like when it's sent to my email. Okay, here we go. Got an email from Zapier, processed by Zapier, and there's the invoice attached as a PDF. We go back to the original Banner Bear email. That is the same thing that you get when you click download invoice. So you just downloaded an invoice down here. That's what we just grabbed. So for any evil service that puts that invoice behind a link, that's how you can forward that document as an attachment. We're kind of ticking the box of every goofy way that people send these things out. Okay, number three, create a PDF of a linked page from an email. So they link you out to an actual web page that is a page that has the invoice. That's just annoying. I'll show you an example though. Zero does this when they invoice you. So here's your zero invoice, view your bill online. I'm gonna click on there and it pulls you to like a live page. This isn't a document, it's an actual website that's showing your bill. 
So how do we take this, turn it into an email attachment? Okay, zap number three. This one's gonna start with a parser by Zapier like the last one, because we're gonna parse out the URL of that page that it links to. Triggers a new email. I'm creating a new mailbox in Parser by Zapier, specifically for these zero emails. So I'm gonna grab this email, forward our zero invoice, come down to the bit that says view your bill online and grab the URL. Let's invoice URL, save. Select that mailbox we just created and we are on to step number two. So how to make a PDF from that page that the email links to. We're gonna pull up pdf.co, use the anything to PDF converter. You can see one of the options is to convert a URL and this isn't gonna go how we think but it's a great example of how to troubleshoot this sort of thing. So the input type is a link to a web page. Under input, we're gonna put that link. What do we call it? Invoice URL. Parse output invoice URL. There's the zero web address. Now, other options here. What do we wanna call the PDF file? I don't know, make something up. Scroll down, hit continue. And we're gonna test this out, see what this PDF looks like. Okay, here's the URL of the PDF file I just made. What the hey? That doesn't look right. It's because it's taking a picture of the page before the page is finished loading, dang it. So if you click through the link, it does like a little like loading animation. And it's pulling the PDF before that animation is complete. So how can we get around this? Well, some of these capture services will let you actually wait. So wait three seconds or five seconds until they take it. PDF Co, while it is my favorite service for this sort of thing, back in your setup actions, doesn't give you control over a wait time possible there's a way to do this with custom profiles, but I wasn't smart enough to figure it out. So we're gonna use a different app. One that's kind of my backup to PDF Go. It's called Cloud Convert to do the exact same thing, but wait five seconds before doing the capture. We're gonna say capture website, plug the URL in, output format is PDF. Scroll down here, a bunch of options, defaults are fine, but we're going to say wait for 5,000 milliseconds. Let's test this out, see if we get like the actual page. All right, here's the URL. It actually downloaded the file. There we go. That actually looks like a legit invoice. Go back and look at that page again. So this is the live page. This is what it captured. So it was smart enough to like trim out the whole header stuff and reorient it to be like a letter size page. It's nice. Okay, what do we do with it now? We gotta add one more step to then forward that to your document management service. So send outbound email, point it to Dex, HubDoc, whatever. You get the idea. So that is our third zap. So, so far we have created an attachment out of the body of the email, created an attachment from a file that is linked in an email, and created an attachment from a page that was linked in an email. Fourth thing we're gonna do is the example David Leary talked about, two attachments come in, but when you push them to the software, that creates two transactions. So we're gonna merge those attachments before sending them to the software. This one's actually pretty easy. So, email by Zapier, don't even need the parser, create a new address. Merge attach. Going back to our original banner bear receipt because it has two attachments. All of the Stripe emails now have this. So I've actually got a bunch of services with this problem. And forward to the email address we just created. Okay, here's our email. I hit continue. And we're gonna use PDF Co to merge those two attachments. So our action is PDF merger. So list of links to source PDFs. We're gonna grab the attachments from the first email. So here we go, attachments exists but not shown. I think it does that when there's more than one of them. There you go. And if you have more, you could list more down here. In our case, we just have the one data source, just that one email it's coming from. It's important that auto convert non-PDF files is set to true. That way, whether it's a PDF attachment or something else, it's all gonna get rolled up into one PDF file. And here's our test file, grab that. And there we go, we got a two page PDF. Got the invoice page and the receipt page. Only thing left to do then is forward that email to your document management service. So there you go, David. I fixed your crap for you. Pretty cool stuff. So a few more thoughts on how you can make these even more powerful. Now these four zaps, with them you can squeeze pretty much everything you could possibly want out of an email. Like virtually every transactional email you can imagine for a client. But what if I told you there was more? <laughs> Bonus stuff incoming. Now these apps are super helpful for automating a pile of emails for a client. But what about the second client? You have to create copies of these apps. Point the email addresses to the right Dex file or whatever you're using, and that's gonna be a whole pile of apps, which, don't get me wrong, still better than doing it manually, but what if we could pipe more than one client through those four apps we just built? Not having to make copies of those apps. Say we could pipe 50 clients through them. 500 clients, 5,000, the number's not really important. That's a thing we can do. I'll show you how to do it with the first zap. Then after that, I think it's gonna be pretty self-explanatory. So here's our zap that turns the body of an email into an attachment. For those emails to this zap your email address, 
This guy turns the body into a PDF, sends that PDF as an attachment off to your document management service. How we're gonna change this is instead of hard coding that delivery email address, this is where you would put Hubdoc or whatever, we're gonna use a lookup table. Based on the messages that are coming into this zap, how can you identify which client they're associated with? In my case, we can do that based on the sending email address, where it's coming from. What we do, we work with our clients to set up a shared mailbox, accounting at theirdomain.com. We point all their invoices and receipts to it, and then we manage that, and we set up the rules to redirect those to Dext or whatever else. In this case, Zapier. In my opinion, that's way better than setting all of your vendors to send something directly to bill.com or something. Because if you ever wanna change your service away from bill.com, for example, holy hell is that a nightmare. As opposed to pointing them all to a shared inbox, then you just gotta change all the rules for that inbox. Anyways, in my case, I can tell which client it's for based on what email it came from. So the easiest way for me to set up a lookup table is with Airtable. So I'm gonna create a simple little Airtable base here with a free Airtable account. If you haven't used Airtable yet, it is the best. If you sign up, use the affiliate link in the video description, you'll float my bill for a month. So the only thing we need here is like client email, it's an email address type, and destination email. So Zapier is gonna come out here, look up the client email that it came from, and get and return the destination email, where we want that email to be forwarded for the attachment when it's done. So this could be Jim at Jim's Car Wash, Tina at Oats and More, Logan at BeltBuckles.org. Okay, then the destination email, jimcar at bill.com, something like that. So let's pop over to Zapier and add that lookup. I'm gonna insert it right here after step two, use error table, and the event's gonna be find a record. Continue, select our base, there's only one table in it. Pick which field we want to search on. We're going to search on client email. The search value is going to be the sender from the very first step. So who it's from. That's not what we actually want. We want the sender here. It looks like from's got my name. The sender is just the email address. So there we go. Jason at rlz.io. You know what? I guess I'm going to need to add myself here. A place at aol.com. That should be fine. Okay, hit continue. Test -a There we go. Client email, Jason at rlz. Destination email, a place at aol.com. Now all we got to do, update this step to change the destination to the one we just pulled from Airtable. Destination email, a place at AOL.com. Do you realize what we just did? So with four zaps, you can now build an entire pipeline around these problematic vendor emails where people are having to manually go out and download invoices, forward them, and you can run as many clients and as many emails as you want through that. No manual intervention. Pretty powerful stuff. Now, you can rip off all four of those apps in the video description below. I love building this sort of stuff and sharing what other people are building on my weekly newsletter. Check that one out at subscribe.jason.cpa. Let me know what you thought of this and I'll see you in the next one. How to build a zap to fix them each. What? I may have the order of these wrongs. Oh, I didn't have them wrong. So if we go back, nope. Yep. Cool, buddy. Oh. Look, there's you. Yeah. Oh, I gotta make sure I'm still actually recording. Ooh, it was. Hey.